Lots of people already coming. Let's see here. Got one phone listener, Anna Carroll. Hello. Oh my gosh. Vonda, you and Bill are very popular. I'm just going to say that. There's a lot of people. Bill, it's Bill. He's the drama. A lot of people coming. I don't think Mark that. Alverson. Hi, Mark. It's not usual, Bill, that there's flower click screens that there's a guy in, just so you know. Well, that's true. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Thanks for saying hello. You've got a raised hand there. Already have a raised hand, Pam Pearson. Let's see. Pam, why don't you go ahead, if you look below, unless if you're having trouble, look below at the um, chat box and go ahead and chat in there if you're needing something. You might have just accidentally um, popped your hand up. Oh, Susie Sager says, it looks like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> we feel like the Brady Bunch. Sometimes. Sometimes. So, all right. Let's see. Okay. I think we have quite a few people here. It is being recorded. I know many people have already reached out to me and asked because some of them can only stay part of the time and they don't want to miss a minute of it. So we're going to record this and then I send that recording to Ellie. She make, does a quick edit and then you put it on YouTube, right? Yep. It's going to be on YouTube, but I will also send out a link via email. To okay. Okay, great. And if they just pop on YouTube, they can do a search for Flower Click YouTube channel. Is that right? Yep. Yep. We're Flower Click on YouTube and then it's just listed under our videos. Okay, great. And the only other thing I'm going to say is we are keeping everyone muted just for time's sake. Uh, but if you do have any, any questions, do not hesitate to either write them in the Q&A or go ahead and chat them. And I will make sure at the end, I think Vonda you and Bill have allotted a little bit of time for a quick Q&A, right? I think so. Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Well, I think Ellie and I are going to pop off of here and let you guys get started. Okay. First off, I really want to introduce Bill LeFever, who is the president and CEO of the Bill Doran Company with now 31 locations. Is that right, Bill? Yes. Yeah. We had a little expansion last fall. So nice and busy. For sure. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, and so we are just going to chat a little bit about things, all things floral, and especially looking at what happened a year ago. So when we say when we say what happened a year ago, uh, my slide, which if you can't see it, is just this one year ago. I actually was on my way back from Mexico and we were hearing all this stuff on the news about what's going on in this COVID thing and wearing masks. And we're like, I was with Lori and Ellie and we're just like, what? So Bill, where were you when all that happened? Do you remember that? Just like one of those things? Oh, for sure. It, it, but I was probably one of those initial deniers thinking, oh, this is, you know, being overblown by, you know, maybe it's something political, who knows? And so I kept thinking, you know, be like a SARS thing that never really affected us in the United States, but was bigger outside. So it, it wasn't until everything really started shutting down right before St. Patrick's Day that I'm like, oh, this is way, way more serious than I ever would have guessed. I remember actually calling you because I had a flower shoot um, booked in Des Moines, Iowa for a flower click. And I'm like, Bill, what do you think? And you're like, oh, no, it's fine. Go. And it was the best <laughs> advice you could have given us because otherwise we wouldn't have gotten our Celebration of Life book completed. So it was perfect. Yeah. But um, it was like, okay, there we go. Sometimes naivety, naivety is bliss, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's been, a, that's been a long year for a lot of people. And the initial reaction was the farms just we saw the media on our side saw the media throwing away flowers and you know we had all these pictures coming in from you know south america with all this waste and of course flower lovers we just are struck with oh my gosh we could have done something with those but you know there was no way yeah you know they, they it, did, it got dumped at every level and, and i think part of the key was just not to add any more cost to those flowers and transportation ends up being such a huge component and maybe a little bit later when we talk about Mother's Day, I'll probably talk a little bit more about transportation. 
But so to dump them wherever they were at that point was the, the unfortunately the best financial decision. Um, but there were, were there, you know, there were different um, uh, issues hanging out there for sure uh, with, with the distribution of those flowers. And there are even programs where save the growers. I know there are some, uh, some promotions out there for, for bouquets and things that were to help save California growers and even South American growers as well. Yeah, definitely. So they weren't necessarily pulling up plants and things at this point. They were just mostly dumping what they couldn't get to a, a vendor. Yeah, because what you're seeing there in the pictures are, you know, they're already packaged and now there's just no demand, no flights coming out and everyone's canceling their orders. Uh, majority of wholesale uh, locations closed down. So they wanted just to throw those away. But what happened more at the farms was, you know, they're, they're densely uh, populated once the workers are on site. You know, they're walking up and down, even though it's a farm, you think maybe there's a lot of open space. There's people walking up and down the narrow aisles of those farms, cutting the roses and then the packing facilities. It's all very tight. And even more so is uh, the, the, the farms are a little more remote. So most farms run their own buses around the villages to pick up the employees and bring them in. Well, you can't have all these people crowded together in your bus and then in your on your farm. And one, one you know, you didn't want to be the cause of a COVID spread, you know, that, that happened at your farm when throughout the farm, they went back to, you know, 10 or 12 nearby villages. Um, so they stopped having the workers coming in. That was, that's where the plants just kind of got out of control. Majority of the plants, um, I shouldn't say majority, but you know, the hydrangeas and roses, um, those type of plants just kept growing and just became a little more wild. But the, 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 anything with cuttings, the chrysanthemums and uh, disc buds and those type, you know, those ones just, just you know, grew and blossomed and died like, like what we'd see in the summertime here in the Midwest. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then we remember the picture of Mother's Day 2020 where it, they couldn't get enough flowers here, right? The airplanes, and this maybe is still what's happening is they're sending both ways of flowers, right? I mean, trying to get the, or sending back the planes empty. And then this was, this was a actual passenger part of the plane that was filled with flower boxes everywhere. Yeah, well, what happened there, and I, and I think we've talked a little bit about this, um, is that we didn't realize that 70% of cargo, not, not flow on this but 70% of cargo rides on the belly of commercial planes with passenger planes. And so as soon as that, as soon as the commercial plane stopped with the passengers, there was no, there was no avenue to move the boxes. Um, you know, there weren't enough just cargo only. And so once that, once that came into play, then that's when, you know, pictures like this actually did occur um, until air, until passenger flights started taking off again. Um, but at that same time, demand was pretty low for flowers. So it, it was kind of a double-edged sword. That's the, the picture you're looking there is purely Mother's Day, like when, when, when the demand suddenly came booming back and a lot of states uh, kind of lost in their restrictions for um, retail flower shops to be open. Yeah, I mean, because on our side with our Flower Clip members, we saw record numbers and you probably saw a lot of that too, record numbers of flower sales. It was just crazy good. Yeah, all the, all the stats that I've seen basically you know, were great all the way, you know, not counting the events, uh, the missed events, I guess I should say, you know, even the fall holidays were strong as well, but Mother's Day last year was very, very strong, surprisingly strong. I think caught everyone off guard, that's for sure. You know? Yeah, I think that was it. I think everybody was caught off guard. We were very fortunate that we had already partnered with Bill Doran Company with our bundles. So those bundles were able to get in, people were able to utilize those, which not just helped for flower sourcing, but also for um, productivity wise, you know, with designers working with that. So that worked out really well. For sure. So then the question is, what's uh, this year? There's a lot, right? There's a lot to this. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like a broken record uh, when you've had me on different, different times, I always say, you know, pre-book early, there's going to be a shortage of available, you know, lack of availability and things like that. And, and I think I've been somewhat accurate in that, you know, when I say that, you know, the, the flood of product at the end of the holiday that we think of from like 10 years ago where the prices get compressed, that hasn't happened. And, and so when I've said it before that, that you know, the, to, to, to book early and, and, and procure your product, it was just to say that there wasn't, you know, you, there's, no, there's no advantage to waiting. So you might as well book now to know you get, get the particular farms you want, get the particular varieties you want. That's what I've kind of mentioned in the past when you've had me on for different um, holidays and, and I'll say pre-booking because there was the price, I was kind of saying the price wasn't going to drop, so you might as well lock in now. Right. This year, I'm saying it's even more so than that. It's, it's not just that the prices aren't going to drop, it's that the availability is going to just disappear. Um, 
get the product in, get what you need as, as a retailer, get on the phone, put, book it with your favorite vendor of choice. Um, mm -hmm. uh, be prepared, you know, that, that what you order, there may be substitutions, um, especially with certain varieties. Um, I, I know what we're, we're telling our sales staff and we have calls this week um, amongst with our sales staff saying, you know, don't over promise on specifics. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's a certain type of, um, uh, you know, Moonstone variety or, or Mother of Pearl, uh, you know, be a little cautious on saying, yeah, I can get you 1500 stems of that, no problem from the farm you want. That we've always prided ourselves on the ability to make that happen. But now we're saying we got to back off a little bit with that. We'll get that same tone and that same color tone for you, but no guarantees on specific varieties. Um, I think it's going to be a very tight, tight Mother's Day. I mentioned once um, when we were talking offline before that we have a, far, a smaller farm that we deal with that um, normally gives us an offering and, we, and, and early we buy from them weekly. So we get kind of first pass at their, their holidays and then we take the stems that we need and want and, and the pricing kind of worked out. And uh, normally that offering is about 400,000 stems of roses. It's a, it's a smaller Ecuadorian, pretty small Ecuadorian farm. And, and often we would take half, maybe two thirds of those stems um, to, you know, because it's stem length and all those varieties, and we know kind of what our branches need and want, and we give them an early, uh, give them an early, early um, purchase order, and then even pay a little bit on the earlier side, so he has money to buy all the extra boxes and for his upcoming overtime. Long story to say, this year where we got, he offered us about a fourth of the number of stems to look through, so we went from about four hundred thousand to about a hundred thousand, and. I thought maybe it was a pricing thing because we, our pricing is kind of um, set with them and how we work with them. And I said, well, if we were able to pay a little bit more, uh, you know, can this can this list change at all? He said, it has nothing to do with pricing. They've had this, where his particular farm is in Ecuador, they've had such cold weather that he's going to miss, miss the majority of Mother's Day. Uh, the cuttings won't be ready. And this was two months out before ship out of Ecuador. And I said, you, you have no idea what the weather is going to be like for the next two months. He's like, he says, there's nothing Mother Nature can do to get these flowers back up on time for, for, for Mother's Day. I mean, so in some regions, some areas in Ecuador, they've had really, really bad weather. There's been a, a fair amount of um, sleet in some areas too. Some damaging, some not so damaging, but when you, when you think that it's that cold that the, the farms are, you know, the plastics getting hit with sleet, it, it affects um, the, the ability for that rose to grow. So what, what this gentleman was telling me, he's seeing these great big long stems, thick stems, but the head of the rose is still just so tight and so small. It's going to be beautiful. It just takes that that much longer when all the energy has been put into the stem. So it's not good for the retail florist, well, you and the retail florist, but also for them. You feel bad for the farmer, oh, right? This is, yeah, a lot of these farms really rely on Valentine's and Mother's Day. Um, that's they get such a high percentage of their revenue for those two months, um, those two periods that they're able to skate through the rest. You know that's. You know, they can break even a lot of the other months and only lose small and really slow months. They're, 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 they're core of those two. So yeah, it'll be tougher for some of them. That's for sure. Yeah. You may, that makes you feel really bad for sure. Um, price wise, um, Mother's Day, you, there's a lot going on there too, right? Just yeah. I, I, you know, it's, there's not a lot of negotiating from wholesale back to farms. It's, it's more about getting the product. Um, we've already had some key farms, farms that we buy a lot of, a lot of product from, spend a lot of money, already cut us off for Valentine, uh, for Mother's Day. And we haven't even put out, we put out a, a, an early bird for our customers. And, and that's been out for 10 days or so. But our full folder normally has an April 15th-ish cutoff. Um, and, and that's when we have 10 or 12 uh, uh, pages. Uh, we were already planning on moving that up to like an April 8th or 9th cutoff. Um, with these folders going out, you know, early next week. Well, now they're we're already we're thinking that's not even early enough, um, and so we're dramatically, you know, just trying to get get the offerings together. Um, some of the branches are saying we just got to really, really narrow it down and not overpromise with all these varieties and all these custom mix boxes. You know, we almost just seem to go back to like the, uh, you know, the the mid '90s. Okay, here's CDNs. You know, not where we're giving the specifics and specific colors because it's overpromising and potentially under delivering. Um, demand is that strong and, and production is that weak. Um, but I, I think probably pricing wise, I think people are seeing the higher prices even right now. Retailers are probably seeing, you know, it's, it's mid-March, you know, it's first week of March so, and pricing is as strong as ever. Um, and, and it's twofold. One is the, the demand for the product is strong. 
Mm -hmm. um, supply is average at best and, and demand is increasing. And then the other component of all of all of our costs is the freight to get that product from South America, um, you know, all the way to Des Moines, Iowa, and then on to a customer somewhere in Texas and on. But there's a tremendous amount of, of, of logistics costs there, and you know, air freight's more expensive. Kind of we just alluded to, but trucking. I mean, I, if if, you, if anyone's paid attention to, you know, if they're just you know FedExing a care package to somebody in college or, or to friend or something you know it used to just be 10 12 dollars is now it's about a, in some cases it's about a third more that you know 10 to 12 is now 18 to 19 dollars for that same size box to, you know to go you know second day or, uh, overnight um just that much product going through e-commerce i guess and, and the cost of drivers and trucking and now we're seeing gas prices skyrocket skyrocket back up after a year ago when we had some of the lowest gas prices we, we saw yeah, not only the higher prices, which I've seen actually, because I mail quite a bit of packaging, is is double. A lot of the packages that I send to the same place are like double in price. And then a lot of times they have that, but we can't guarantee it'll be there in two days like we used to, because they always have that, you know, high demand. And so hopefully flowers are getting in there first and then other packages not. But I don't know. I'm just always amazed. Yeah, so I think that just puts pressure on all shipping costs, you know. Uh, if you're a truck driver, it doesn't matter if you if your trailer's filled with flowers or if it's filled with boxes. You know, you're going to go with where the where the where they're paying you the most, and so yeah. we're, we're now paying more more so than ever. So we were talking earlier about some of the shortages that are happening now, and why is that? I mean, somebody called me the other day and said they were completely out of white carnations; they couldn't find a white carnation anywhere. And I'm like, white carnations? I mean, you usually can find those anywhere, right? But yeah. What weird things are, are, are being? I hear from our, all of our buyers and our branch managers as well. And it's called, you know, product shortage. Uh, the, the, the basics, even they're just not there. And it's, you know, best we can tell. There's a handful of things happening, but demand is still just so strong. Um, our customers need more and more flowers, and we're putting more and we're buying more from our from our suppliers and growers. Um, there was uh, also a tremendous amount of consolidation amongst the growers. The big growers um, didn't just go buy little growers, they've gone out and bought some big farms. Um, the Elite Flower and the Sunshine Bouquet, some of these really, really, you know, basically the four big guys used to control probably about, um, uh, maybe, maybe about 50% of maybe, maybe even a little bit more of the production in South America between Ecuador and Colombia, uh, four, four larger companies. Um, and, and they've all expanded. Um, and, and so that puts a little bit of pressure. Um, they, they run as businesses, if it's not a profitable farm, if it's not a profitable product line, um, you know, they, they have you know, made the decision not to reinvest in those lines um, after, after making some of these purchases. So supply of some items um, is definitely pushed down. Um, those, those farms that were just relying on the holidays and then kind of skating through the remainder of the year, that that philosophy doesn't necessarily work for everyone that I just kind of referenced earlier. So the shortage, and then the other part of it is I referenced the cold weather. They they just haven't had a great uh, growing season, especially these last four weeks or so. It hasn't been you know what it what it normally is down there. Jeez, well what are we what are we looking at beyond? When I say beyond, you know it's like we're getting through there, um, and pro productivity is coming up. I think we hit that a little bit. And, and then you and I talked a little bit beforehand about what happens when the economy actually opens back up, when we see where people now can embrace, right? They can go see their moms at Mother's Day. They can go visit. And I, I wish we had a crystal ball. We can right. tell that, but it's- you know, I've heard some people chatting about it, saying things like, well, you know, we, the, the floor industry rode this little boom, but you know, once everyone can do their own thing, they're gonna be, you know, the, We'll see that we'll see the demand come back down, but I think what they're what they're missing there is two things. One is hopefully people got in the habit. We if we please the customer with that, if, if they if they were a satisfied consumer, mm -hmm. um, you know they're more likely to buy again. So it was a definite benefit for us. But what we're missing is that we haven't had the weddings and the events. They're going to come back then. So when it opens, the, these uh, the, the, you know these weddings and uh, talking to some uh, uh, florist that works closely with one particular wedding venue, very large. But venue out east was saying that you know it used to be that on a Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday wedding, 
they're looking at doing Tuesday weddings and Wednesday weddings, and they're already prepping for that. Um, with that, those flowers are now, you know, if you're, if you're going to do wedding work, can you imagine having a bride on a Wednesday, you know, and a Thursday and a Friday? I mean, because the venues don't have enough space and there's not enough um, altars to get married at. So when it opens, yeah, we, we may lose some of the gifting, maybe some of what, what, what we rolled this boom out on, but I think the events have the potential to come back. Um, another colleague in the industry said, you know, uh, it's going to go back to the roaring 20s, you know, like the 1920s after prohibition was repealed and, and, and everything was happening. You know, the, so they're calling the 2020s the roaring 20s that you know, there's a potential for that as well, um, which which would be decadence and, and, and a lot of a lot of floral co coming into it as well. So, you know, we have that as, as, as uh, something potential to look for, forward to. So it's I think it's really how the retailers position themselves for for these different things. Yeah, well, I totally agree with that. And the thing that I would say is, you know, we finally got the consumer to buy online, right? And we just have to continue with those kind of um, pushes. You know, now now they're used to doing that. The social media let him know what's going on and the, the wedding and some events. A lot of shops have gone from taken those small events and done backyard weddings and that. So their name is still out there. And then yep. when that boom, that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every day. I mean, there were Monday weddings going on for heaven's sakes. Who would ever think about getting married on a Monday? But, you know, there's only, like you said, only so many altars, which I think is just a yeah. perfect way to put that. Yeah. So 2021, uh, there's a couple of things we talked about. Um, one, you said to be open to something new and something new is tinted and dyed. And I would have to be the one who would say, I never was open to that, right? But now I see yeah. it everywhere. And well, you know, I think initially um, we in the floral industry dislike the tinted concept, right? It's not natural, it's not botanically correct, um, but we can't be the bottlenecks. You know, I, I had uh, wholesale sales people just say, I'm not selling those things. It was back maybe when it first came out was like the crazy daisies, right? This the tinted daisies um, and, and, you know, that, but there's a group of buyers out there that really embraces that. We are seeing more and more, um, and not necessarily just within my company, but as I travel for the, for the industry and being in touch, the tinted and dyed. And I should I should allude to because I, I use those terms when you and I talked earlier and, and they're up on the screen there. But inside the industry, tinted and dyed, that, that, those, those two words work real well. But I have learned from talking to other retailers that uh, retail out to consumer, um, obviously, not obviously, but the word dye is not something we want to be associating with flowers because they're already a perishable product and people's concern is that they're not going to live long enough on their, their table. So the dyed component word is probably not the best of words. And so the word that I've, I've heard used more and more is enhanced. So it, they're naturally beautiful flowers and they're just, they've are just they just been enhanced with some more color. And, and the, the, the woman that explained that to me at the retail flower shop said, you know, it's like some women wear a little makeup, some wear a lot of makeup. So these some of these flowers just need a little makeup um, and, and some need a lot more makeup. And then that's why they might be multicolored carns and things like that. So um, uh, I, there, there's a trend there. That I, I know from the farm perspective, they are tinting a ton and ton of flowers. Bill Dorn Company isn't the one buying that many of them, you know, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we're not the bottleneck to that. And so I just kind of throw it out there that watch, you know, be aware of that. People, people are buying them um, and, and through what channel. And, and I know I've had people say, well, that's a mass market item. That's, you know, something like that. But at the end of the day, we got to provide what the consumer wants and, and we shouldn't be the bottleneck um, right. to, to that. Well, weren't you saying that they're making that multicolored carnation like they did the rose? Now they're doing. Yeah, you know how the rose would have like four colors that they, you know, basically they slice the bottom into quadrants and then put it into four different test tubes. Um, uh, yeah, I was on I was on a Zoom call with uh, with a, a, a carnation farm, and obviously carnations have been dyed often just to get the blues and the different colors. But he was showing me the four color tinted carn, and to think the cost of doing that is is is. It's not, it's very, it's very expensive because of the labor. They have to get the, the dyes aren't, aren't cheap. They gotta get the temperatures right. The rooms that they're in, they're no longer can just use the regular cooling rooms. They're now using warming rooms to get it up and then putting it back in the cooler. So that tremendous amount of labor and work versus just cutting a carn and, and, and putting it in um, just one solution and moving on uh, for, for dyed. So the fact that they're investing that much money into that carnation, I mean, of all, of all things is, um, uh, goes to show that it's out there. Um, Limonium, uh, lapidium, um, 
the jip, a lot of jip. And the neat thing about the jip, whether you like it or you don't, um, is that uh, as it opens up, um, not all, not all the little, the, not all the buds um, get dyed. Um, so the, the next set pop out is white. So then it almost becomes like a, a two-toned um, uh, version. Um, but yeah, it's uh, all, and then the painted foliage, the amount of painted, we do sell a fair amount of that. Um, uh, Fern Trust, uh, one of our partner farms, our partner growers in, in Florida, does a tremendously great job with you know, and it's not just the gold and silver and and and, and copper, you know, which would, which we've kind of been selling a lot of those those tones for a while because I think the the metallic look for the for the greens was always something that people um, appreciated, but now we're seeing every color. You know, yeah, hot pink. I mean, who wants hot pink leather leaf? Well, there, hot pink leather leaf's being made. I don't know who's buying it. I don't know who's using it, but it's being made. Um, so I, I, when we chatted, I said, we, I fear that we as a company and then potentially, you know, other flower clickers are, you know, hesitant to embrace that because it's not our cup of tea, let's say. But we, we've got to be careful not to, not to steer people away. And as I mentioned, um, Lori in our new sales prep school that's coming out soon had said to the, in the training, just because you don't like it doesn't mean you don't sell it because there are people out there like this is a perfect example of color enhanced foliage and baby's breath and you know, whatever it's somebody else is going to love it. You have it right behind you on your table, that green. Yeah, this is, color this enhanced. Is Look at that. Perfect for St. Patrick's day. And yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but the, so maybe a maybe a fourth of them are still white as they, as they as they popped out that's beautiful yeah so then i think the freight cost you kind of covered a little bit um before um that it's just yeah it, it's just and it's not it's not just floral I mean, like we talked about all all to move any box from point a to point b is going up dramatically um and and flowers travel a long distance that's for sure um and it leads into your next point there of the, the california product it's very difficult to get freight from the west coast um, heading east to the midwest all the way out to the east coast that 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 is skyrocketed even at a larger increase than from south florida back um, at least on south florida there's more product being hauled down there to be exported to south america mm -hmm. so then um so then there, we, get, we have the ability to bring uh, some of those trucks back to, to the midwest um, but from california there's not a lot of product being shipped back from the Midwest back to California or anything like that, so um, we're seeing we're seeing things happen there for California product uh, uh, freight going up even higher there, and then you factor in that there's less product for us to buy out of there, so our our freight our, our consolidations are smaller and smaller. Um, more and more of that product um, isn't being grown in California. Those farms have now um, switched to cannabis and a lot of portions, you know, they can take a certain percentage of their farm and move it to cannabis. They've done that. Um, labor costs are so high, water rights are so expensive out there in California that a lot of that production that even when we think it's California, it's actually now Mexican. And whether it's the Baja Peninsula, Baja grown, or if it's, a, if it's grown in the, like the Via Guerrero area, you know, more central Mexico, um, more and more of that product's being, being grown south of the border, um, which is unfortunate because that's where a lot of the, um, novelty type flowers uh, where they were such good specialty growers of that after um, you know after they stopped growing mums and, and roses um, you know years ago so good news and bad news there I mean, it's, it's not good news that's for sure but um, South American growers have become better at a handful of those items um, I think you and I were chatting earlier and I said something about I remember the first time we started bringing in um, stock from South America um, the, the fragrant stock type of uh, item and it didn't compare to what we could get out of California. Um, you know, everyone was used to getting all that product out of California, but um, wouldn't, but we didn't have the ability to just get, you know, an extra 100 bunches of white stock. And so we could out of South America because it was how they were growing and the varieties they were using. So we would sub in South American stock I'm going 10, 12 years ago and people didn't like it. Now South American stock is you know, on par, or in some cases, even better than what we can get out of, out of the, the West Coast. And um, they got better over the time. And, and now we're also seeing that with like anemones and ranunculus and scabiosa pods. Um, you know, I guess thistle isn't super hard to grow, but they now have the, the right varieties and, and, and they're growing a bigger and better 
So a lot of that blue thistle that gets you the texture that everyone is looking for, you know, all of that's now in South America, whereas not that many years ago it was in California. Right, and since California can't grow it anymore, you're less less growers, and the shipping costs are higher. It just it's it's good for the industry that that's taken off because otherwise we'd have a real lull there in those specialty products that we normally would get from from California. For sure. Yeah. Um, anything else, um, Bill, that you think is important for us to add, or should we? Uh... The only last thing I would say is, um, and and I think. I think this is what your group of people does best is, you know, sell a concept, a color tone and textures. If you get too caught up uh, between Mother's Day and then even the, this flush of party works that could be coming back. I mean, you know, quick, there's only gonna be so many quicksand available, period. Uh, they can't plant enough and, and grow enough. And when Pinterest has a running quicksand or moonstone or mother or pearl or whatever it's gonna be, I don't know what, I don't know what you know, a candlelight is a great new white. When that takes off on Pinterest, that's all anyone's going to want. And I, I told the story to a group of retailers the other day. I said it was different. It, it was a lot different a number of years ago before social media and, and the internet really had a play on that. I said because you know what was popular for weddings in Iowa was different than Ohio, which different than Texas, which was different than New York and Wisconsin. So they each had their own pockets of what was regionally uh, in fashion, and that even included varieties of roses, um, and as well as you know, uh, you know particulars. Once Pinterest hit, now it's kind of across the board. It, it, it hits, and that's what everybody wants. And there's not going to be enough of these items. I just, I, I know it's going to be disappointing brides if you're, you know, if you say, I, you know, there's going to be 500 Moonstone available. They may or may not. The earlier you give the order to whoever your supplier is, the better chance you're going to get it because they're going to place for that farm two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out. Um, try to put certain things on standing order if you know your regular wedding house. Um, put them on standing order. And then if you don't need them, let your wholesaler know that you don't need them that week. Maybe they'll sell them for you because odds are they probably can. But um, I, I caution where we're headed, even not only with Mother's Day, with needing to use your second or third variety. But man, if, if these if, if, if the events come back, like we hope they, I mean, if, the, if everything opens up, the events come back, it's going to put some real price pressure and availability even more. So it won't matter what you're willing to spend. There may just not be enough stems. And so that's what we always say anyway, right? I mean, you work with your salespeople all the time. It's like, don't sell the certain variety. And you know which varieties are good substitutes for other. I mean, you know, there's, you got quicksand, but you got two or three others that are same color. The bride's not going to know that it's not that exact rose. You will as the uh, vendors, right? Or the the flower shop owners, but most of the time they're not. So you have to trust that you as a professional are selling the color palette rather than this certain variety of rose. And, and you see that with varieties already. You know, if you buy them from a certain part of Ecuador, the, the northern versus the southern parts of Ecuador, you, that same variety might have a slight different hue if they're side by side. Totally recognizable for what they are, you know, it, apart from each other. But next you go, wow, there's, a, there, there's some nuances to them for sure. So you have that as the mother nature um, backup as well from, from what's going on as a retailer to the end consumer. Yeah, for sure. That's great. Um, Lori, shall we um, open it up for questions? Yes, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to put you guys back in gallery view so you can take turns answering the questions. If you have a question, like I said at the beginning, feel free to put it in the chat box down below. If you hover with your cursor down below, you'll see the chat box and you will also see a Q and A. You can put it in either one of those. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to start reading the questions that um, many people posted when they registered. And here's one that I think maybe you guys can tag team on. This is from Caroline and Clara from Razzle Dazzle, some of our Flower Click members. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, with us finding different products and available during this time, what is the best way to keep the customers informed and satisfied? Communication is key, right? You just have to let them know, you know, that this is not available, but this is your suitable, suitable substitute. We can, as Bill talked about, you know, we can stay with the integrity of the look but the flowers, you know, you might have not have this color rose, but you have this color something else and you're going to stick with the same color combinations. Yeah, you can still give good value and ultimately, 
you know, hopefully that's what you're selling. Um, you know, maybe the, whether it's the design technique plus the color um, and following through on that, that that's, I think, some of, the, some of the key. Yeah, I just, I want to add, because you know me, Vonda, I'm like, it is all in the delivery. It is all in how you deliver the message. <laughs> if you don't have that flower, how you respond, if you are still positive and going, you know what we do have though, we have this and it is amazing. And it's all in how you sell it. They're listening to you and looking at you for the confidence. So I just, I just think, you know, if you, if you go out and go, Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that. I mean, we do have some orange roses, but well, I don't want that. You don't sound excited about it. Why would I feel excited? And, and not to, defend anything but if you blame it on your supplier it looks poorly on you right <laughs> I, tell, I, tell, I tell our salespeople all the time even if it is a grower's fault they mislabel the box or they put the wrong items in there or they just didn't ship if you're just going to say i ordered them for you but the grower grower failed me it it, it looks bad on the salesperson you, we just have to say if they're not available they didn't get here but here's here's a solution we need to move on here's what i can do for you don't 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 just sit there and beat up the grower that you know didn't do anything. Right. So likewise, I would recommend just don't blame it back on your supplier. It doesn't make you look any better. It actually, you know, it, it makes right. you look like you made a poor choice in suppliers. <laughs> That's a really good point. It's a very good point. Um, here's another one by another member, Carla. And she is asking, will the sourcing of plants ease up soon? We are having so much trouble getting even the basic peace plants right now that one is going to be a little bit longer to come back than um than the, the cut flowers um partially because they, they take longer to grow um and there wasn't there wasn't the investments made you know last spring um at this at, you know the growers weren't plowing hundreds of thousands of dollars into cuttings and, and, and small plants so that, that the the outlook really got tight then factor in that plant plant consumption is even skyrocketed a lot more than than um, the cup flower consumption. So the, the supply and demand is just off, just off kilter. Um, our plant buyers um, have gone down to Florida and met with the growers more this time than they normally do in, in a couple year period, um, just to just to try to keep those relationships strong. There's just not enough plants, and there's nothing that's going to be done except a little bit of time. The millennials love their green babies, you know, hashtag green babies. You see that on all those items. And, you know, what I thought was a great thing was that they didn't take care of them. So every 30 days, they needed to get a new they green baby. New ones. <laughs> but now we kind of want them to take care of them for a little bit longer or, or bring them back to you. Maybe you could have trade in and get their old plants and give them some, give them a little fertilizer, some sun and, and some water. And you might be able to recycle your own plants if you're a retailer. I don't know, but uh, I just imagine that there's gotta be something that can be done. But I, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit longer before the cycle, before plants catch up. It's, 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 it's going to be a while. And I, I, I hate to even say how many months, but it's, it's months out there. All right. That's well, it's, I think in that, like you said, it just is what it is. It's the truth. And it's across the board. They can call every flower shop in their area. They're all going to probably have the same conversation, you know? So again, offer maybe something else that you do have. Um, I think you guys spoke into this, but I'm going to give you a chance to add anything that you might have. This is from Greg and Laura from Florafinos. And they say, the, um, the supply chain has been in trouble since last March. When will things improve? Supply is inconsistent, but quality has, seems to have taken a hit as well. I, were they talking about hard goods supplies as well? Is that part of that? I think they're talking about both. Yeah, some of the, there's I'm, there's repetitive questions on here and people yeah. are talking about both. I, I think I'll, I'll, so I'll divide it in the question kind of two, the hard goods component question okay. of this yeah. and then potentially the quality side of it, which I haven't heard as much about it, quality of cut flowers, um, which I'll have to think a little bit because I haven't heard too much there. But the hard goods have been, um, you know, the same thing with these hard goods manufacturers. They cut everything last March. I mean, they canceled every purchase order they could possibly cancel um, immediately and, and, and shut down factories. And you don't just flip a switch. Um, things that were supposed to be put on boats, you know, last summer, you know, it, it can be close to a nine month turnaround uh, on some of that. And it's not like then they just immediately in June said, okay, the world's going to be better. They didn't just, they canceled all their POs in March. 
and didn't place new POs until kind of depends. I mean, we're looking at suppliers that are saying they hope to have, you know, product in, um, you know, in June, in July, they, they should finally have it into their, into their warehouses from, you know, from, from overseas. Um, that definitely has had a huge factor, um, you know, on, on containers, especially novelty containers. Um, it's put a lot of price, pre price pressure on uh, traditional um, bases as well. Uh, we're seeing our third price increase um, from our main glass suppliers in, so it was January, it'll be April 1st, we had one January 1st, and then we had one in the fall. So what is that? Three and you can say three quarters, but if you think about all the time, we have three price increases in nine months. Um, and I don't believe that any of these manufacturers are gouging anybody. Their costs are rising. The demand is there. Trucking is increasing. Um, so it's, it's very difficult, that's for sure. So hard goods is going to be difficult um, uh, for a little bit longer, but that one will come back faster than plants. Okay. <laughs> plants, the demand on plants is just so strong and it, you can't speed up the production of plants, right? It's, right. They only, they only grow so much each, each week, each month. Um, right. Quality of product, if, if, for fresh product, I think the gentleman that you referenced it, yeah. Boy, if they're not getting the quality they want, they should really talk to their their um, their salesperson and, and maybe the, uh, the right owner of that company, the sales manager, because product is moving faster through the chain than it ever has. It's not sitting yeah. many places at all. So if if there's a quality issue, I, I guess it could. I mean, it could be people just trying to rush the growing process and and cutting too fast. So yeah. I'm not saying that there's not, but I wouldn't accept quality, a poor quality, that's for sure. I, I, right. I, I, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I know we, we've we had nothing but rave reviews about our bouquets that we've been getting. <clears throat> I mean, who was it that just said, Michelle, Flowers by Michelle in Las yeah. Vegas. She just said the bouquets were amazing quality. And she said, if you're not getting any, there's something wrong with you. Is that what she said? <laughs> she did. You're missing. She said, if you're not getting any, you're missing out. You're missing but out. She's talking about her Valentine's Day and ordering Great the quality the from the natural farm, so it's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see. I think there's multiple questions, but the same topics, the same topics. Um, hard to find products and plants are the big. It seems like the consensus is those are the two biggest concerns. And we don't have any. No one has put anything into the chat or the Q and A. Well, why don't we give them just a few minutes, Lori? And Ellie is just going to go through a quick presentation to let people know what is Flower Click, because okay. I think that's always a question. So, if you All would right. hold on just a minute with us here, Bill. Well, of course. All right. Hi, guys. Just in case, we wanted to just give you a little bit of an overview on what we are. So, Flower Click. Uh, is women led, women run. We are a small team that works very efficiently. Uh, we bridge the gap between retail florists and the modern day consumer, taking your flower shop to an elevated shopping experience. In return, you get higher sales, higher profits, and happier staff with a more streamlined system. We have a background in flora, in uh, flowers, in Vonda obviously running a shop, me growing up in the shop, Lori with over 10 years of experience. So we love this industry like you do. And um, we're just here to give you the tools to uh, grow your shop and be more successful. So this is a very overwhelming little overview of everything that we offer. Um, we kind of have four pillars or three pillars, um, the service aspect, which is that we do website management. Um, we're also full-time concierge so that any customizations that you need, we're there for you. We have a library of exclusive images and products with coordinating recipes. And we kind of have a different approach where we, we want to make it as simple and streamlined as possible for you. So we use limited containers. Um, Vonda mentioned the exclusive bundles, um, lots of things. If you want to know more, obviously we are here to chat. Um, but also included in your membership, you get a custom wedding site, wedding portfolio where you can add your own work. Um, you, we have Google My Business posts, Facebook posts, and SEO optimization included in that monthly membership. 
We also have a celebration of life guide to increase your sympathy sales. We have a members only portal with all of those recipes um, and a lot of resources. And then uh, a community where you can talk to fellow members and just kind of get that community, get that help that you need, get inspiration, all that. We also have two online courses, Flower Prep School, which takes, you know, in a nutshell, it can take a, a delivery driver to a <laughs> designer. Um, we also have Sales Prep School, which gets your entire staff, new and existing, up to speed on amazing customer service. That's Lori's baby. And uh, we're super excited about that one. We also have a YouTube channel and we do webinars and education sessions. And we also have a podcast and uh, a member group with that or a, a Facebook group with for the podcast that you're more than welcome to join. Um, and so we have a lot going on. Anything to add, Lori, feel free to hop in. Um, I'm just laughing at sweet Janet and the candlest. She just chatted. She said, thank you. Feel free to use my name and number to let people know how great your company is. <laughs> we love Janet and I will Janet. Everyone called Janet at McCandless Floral. There we go. Yeah, and I guess the biggest takeaway is that, you know, obviously in this past year, we know how important online shopping has become to people and just become the new norm across the board. And so it's really about making sure that your second location, your, your online uh, shop is as beautiful as it can be, that it's set apart from the competition, that you're getting a good conversion rate and a higher average order. All of those things are what we are passionate about. So that's basically it. We're doing work that you don't love or that you don't have time for. And you're basically hiring us instead of hiring that, that employee that it's hard to find usually, right? So it's another reason we have Flower Prep School. Anyway, um, so these are the platforms that we currently work with. If you, you know, if you have one of these platforms, we are more than happy to have a conversation with you um, and tell you more, right, Lori? Great, thanks, Ellie. Okay, we have a couple more questions. So if you wanna stop sharing your screen so they can come back on here, um, that was awesome. And I know that, Ellie maybe that was froze just for a second there. So if anybody missed anything or has any questions about flower click, just email Lori at flowerclick.com and I can help you. Uh, we have one more question that from Carla saying she's having trouble getting the small clear cylinder um, that we use a lot in our designs. Any suggestions for that one? And you've checked all the syndicate sales opportunities there, Carla, check that out. Um, Dollar Tree, check there. Oh. I'm not sure that was one that some people were finding some glass. Walmart. Some people found some at Walmart. Um, doesn't Dollar Tree actually have a website? Ellie, didn't you order some? Yeah. So I think, Bill, we've had a lot of problems with syndicate not having the certain syndicate uh, sizes. And so we've just been sure. telling people go wherever you can and get what you can. Like, understandable. You got to. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Lori Crom, yes, you can watch the replay. Ellie is going to run it through her little edit program and then she will put it up on the Flower Click YouTube channel. I think it also will be re sent out in an email to everyone that was here. So, that will be there. Um, oh, looking for a phone number for Flower Click. Goodness, what is my phone number? 1-800-I-CLICK, <laughs> C-L-I-Q-U. I'll put it in the thing. I don't even know my own phone number. How sad is that? Miss <laughs> Ellie figured that one out to start with. So. Well, Bill, I, I really appreciate your time today. I know everybody just got a wealth of information about what to expect for the holidays and where we're going and some great tips on being prepared when it all opens back up. So. Do the best we can, right? That's all we can hope for. That's right. Thanks, Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks. Everybody have a great day.